フルカウンター When you first start playing Black Claw Mobile, the first banner you see and is right in your face is this new seasonal banner. We have Yami, Mimosa, and Osa Asta all in their seasonal outfits. And compared to the other two banners, which just has for Golion and Yami, you're probably going to likely want to summon for this one because it does have three new characters. But you actually can guarantee one of these characters for free and also off your choice. So if you only really care about Yami, you only want to get Mimosa, then you can probably actually skip this banner and go towards other banners like Yami, or even just start saving for the next banner that we're going to be getting for the next few weeks now so today we're going to break down which of the three are actually worth picking up and should you even summon on this banner let's break it down Okay, so when you start playing and you've done your rerolling, basically, you're going to get free tickets, free multi tickets that you can actually spend on the banner, or 30 tickets, basically, and you can then choose what banner to summon. I might make a video later on going over which banners are actually worth it and what you should focus on, but generally speaking, when you're starting your account, probably focus on this banner first, only because if you're rerolling and you want to get someone new, for example, you actually have a higher chance of getting someone new. Because we do have free characters on this banner, the individual rate for the characters, although it is lower than the actual other banners, because there are three of them it actually is 1.5 percent so you have a higher chance to get someone new but a lower chance to get the one you actually want right and bear in mind you do have to summon for the skill pages which i'll go through in a second but if you look towards the yami banner and the forgolian banner although it is just them you have a higher rate but it is just them so it's one percent for the one you basically want so it is higher rate for one character but it's also a lower rate in general so you're probably not going to get the character so what I recommend doing is doing a few summons and it obviously is a gacha game. You may get unlucky. You may not be getting SSR to like the 10th multi. But I, for example, did get one SSR. Actually, I got a few SSRs, but uh, not the rated up banners. Classic, right? But what I actually did get was the Mimosa skill page. Now, if you want to know what skill pages do, they are very important to making the characters better. Basically, what you have to do is equip the respected, you know, skill page to the respected character. For example, Mimosa, the actual academy one, wants to have her academy skill page. And what it's actually going to do as you can see, it's roughly translated here. You are going to basically buff up her second skill. And it's essentially what the skill pages do. If you get the matching skill page, so it was the matching character, you're going to buff up either passive or skill one or skill two. It's basically a way to make the character better. So since I've gotten this skill page and I can guarantee, you know, one of the three characters, which I'll go through in a second, I might as well just choose Mimosa just because, you know, I might as well get a use of a skill page. Because if I get Yami and I have Mimosa skill page, I'm not really getting a bonus from that. Now, before we go through what characters are better, bear in mind you cannot actually use the same name characters on the team. So while Yami may be the better one and the best out of the three, there's also another Yami out right now. So I'm going to probably summon for this banner. And if I end up pulling Yami, then I can't use both Yamis together. So it's something you've got to bear in mind, right? But how do you get the free seasonal character? Now, if you beat, I believe, chapter one or you progress through story mode, you're going to get one free key, which is in your inventory on launch, basically. And you can then use that free key to open up the gateway of destiny. And you can then pick which character you want. When you do get to pick the character, you're actually going to be locked. You can't back out. And it's quite annoying. But don't worry, because what you can do, what you can do is just click this page and actually just reset. So it doesn't really do anything. What I can do now is just reset. And it will not really change anything. So I can see right now, I can choose. But like I said, you couldn't back out when you first get this page so at that point you may be panicking but don't worry you can reset so bear in mind you can only get one for free but if you change your mind while progressing through a character you then can go back and just reset and start again it will take longer to get the character but generally it doesn't really matter too much so yeah, like I said, I personally got the skill page from Mosa, so I'm definitely going to go for Mosa. So when you do pick your character, there are a lot of challenges you need to do. Now, obviously, it's all in Japanese or Korean, but if you are using BlueStacks, you can just live translate it. It does take uh, quite annoying, but as you can see, the, all you have to do is like change a character to an LR. you got to clear that to a corridor of memory three times. you got to play 50 protos. Basically, you're just going to get this over time. It'll take a few days to do it, but generally, it's nothing too hard to go out. You can probably do it naturally, but even if you don't see what the translations are, what you can do is literally just click the button and it'll take you to where you need to go which would be like for example clearing the patrol stages or getting to an LR it will just do it for you basically now, another thing to know is, before we break down the characters and who to go for, since, obviously, Yami and Asta are very popular characters, Yami already having two SSRs, you can't actually use the same name character on the same team. So, for Mimosa, for example, she's probably not going to get as many characters as Asta and Yami, so she's probably not going to get her place as quickly as them two, although I think they are good characters. You know, be wary, right? We don't know what's coming. This is obviously a new game. And to be fair, if you have seen a few leaks, there actually are not more Yamis in the files, so uh, keep that on the down low. So, I think for longevity mode, Mosa might just be the go-to, but we have to wait and see. 
Okay, so generally speaking, what character you should pick in, it's honestly up to you. They're all really, very good and have their uses. So you can just pick your favorite character. If you want to ask, do you want to get yummy, but rather than spending diamonds or gems on the actual new yummy banner, then you can just get that free yummy and move on and save the next character. Uh, but if you want to know what they do, then we're going to break it down. So firstly, I do think that yummy is probably going to be the best one, but that is because of PvP. This character in particular is going to do more better and just thrive more in PvP, but still a good PvE character. This Asta, for example, we're going to break it down. He is um, probably usable in PvP, but definitely a lot better in PvE. Kind of the reverse of Yami, basically. And Mimosa is just a good healer. That's as simple as that. Revive as well. She is going to be good for PvP and PvE. So the, the takeaway here is Mimosa is good for PvE and PvE, where Yami is good for PvP, and Asta is more or less better in PvE content. So uh, that's kind of a good choice, what they've done here. If you want to focus on PvP, go towards Yami. If you want to focus on PvE, go towards Asta. If you want to do a bit of both and you want to use Mimosa, then you kind of just focus on her for both, both of the content, right? But uh, let's break down what the character does. Alright, so if you want to know what Yami does, he's a pretty simple character. His passive is going to increase damage dealt by 5%. His second passive is going to increase damage dealt by 50% towards favorable conditions. So basically type advantage. Once again, a good DPS character. Now let's go towards the in-game so we can show the actual footage here. His skill one, as you can see right now, he's going to get a buff. It's going to disappear because uh, I don't think it, it lasts that long in that uh, trading mode, basically. But uh, what you're going to do is increase your actual attack and your magic power by 30%, as you can see right now, too. But you're only going to get that buff if your actual special gauge is more than 4. So this little ultimate here, if it is less than 4, your single target damage is going to do less damage, basically. So you want to constantly have this above. You don't really want to use the ultimate straight away, but we're going to break down what the ultimate does do. And it is pretty powerful for PvP. So uh, yeah, you'll see in a second. So his second skill is going to counter Mimosa quite hard here. So what he does do for two turns, he is going to infect. He's going to block all recovery so you cannot actually heal, but also increases actual ultimate damage and also his special move damage his combined attack basically so you probably want to do this turn one so the, i think the rotation is like using this to get the damage increase you then will obviously want to stop healing so you then use this the next turn but then we get to his ultimate which is uh generally quite insane if you want to disable one particular character so what he's going to do is block the ultimate move for two turns but also block their skill too so if you find another yami and you don't want to get infected you don't want to get your heal blocks you probably want to ult the yami so he can't use his tier two skill tier two skills are massively important in this game so the fact that you can disable this tier two skill it's going to be huge. But like I said, this is going to be more important for obviously PvP because the same with bosses tier 2 skills will be still quite important and still quite helpful. But when you're going against PP characters that are, you know, going down a certain meta, it's uh, going to be very, very important. So yeah, that is Yami. He's going to increase his damage. He's going to do massive damage single target. He's going to block basic healing and also disable tier 2 skills and ultimates on a single target. And that is what the character is made for. He's meant to be an annoying character to play against in PvP. And uh, that is basically his role. But you can still use him in PvE content. And from what I've heard from Sora, he's uh, been quite good in PvE, but surprisingly good in PvE. Alright, let's break down the Asta. So he is going to be a damage healer. As the game progresses, you're going to get more attack power. And that's essentially what he needs to defeat the bosses he's basically a boss killer and you'll see that through his actual passive and skills so at uh, first he's just going to get a 12 percent buff basically and also at the start of every turn you're going to get a four percent attack power and after three turns it can stack up to three times you're going to get a 12 percent attack power it is um basically way of to deal more damage his first skill we're going to get in and show it you are going to increase your damage though by two percent up to five times so you want to use this single target skill basically five times you can see right now we are going to get a um Little buff right there at the bottom, and that does stack up the five times. So, so once again, you are meant to just be a damage dealer. It also does say it does grant an additional attack, which means you can attack twice, but I can't replicate it. I think that only matters when you're actually in an actual, you know, boss fight. But as it is right now, I believe it, that's how it should work. The next skill is you're gonna increase your speed so you can attack more often, but also as well, you're gonna increase your attack power by 44 42%, I believe it is, which is uh, yeah, quite high as you can see right there. Single targets as well, so you know you're gonna be nuking bosses. But let me get the ultimate, and this is where it kind of shines a little bit. Okay, so we translate this one as you can see right now. You increase your damage though, but the most important thing is when you do attack an enemy who has more than 80% HP. So typically, you're gonna be ulted at the start of the battle just to build up the passive a little bit. Bear in mind, he does take around three turns to fully max out his passive, so that is like gonna be very, very helpful. So typically, you use this at the start of the battle against a boss fight, but also this one when you do attack a boss type enemy, so you know, PvE basically, you increase your damage dealt by 30% and gain an extra attack buff. 
So kind of what I mean by the character not really being used for PvP content, but if you're going to be against boss fights, then uh, he is going to be very, very helpful. But other than that, only PvP boss fights. And other than that, like, if PvE farming, he's got single target attacks, you really want to have AOE damage. So uh, other than that, I think As is probably the worst one, but still very, very good if you get him, but then use him when you actually need him, right? But I do think right now, we are focusing more on AOE damage and just clearing fast in the game. So Asta, probably not the first choice, but if you get him or summon him, definitely still a good choice. And when you do struggle against PvE boss fights, he is going to be the go-to character. Alright, so most of we're gonna start off with the ultimate here because this is kind of what the character I believe is based around with the passive and everything else. So uh, the most important thing is that she does apparently revive. Now I have to wait and see how it works in the game, but when you do use it, you can select a target. So if you can revive a dead ally, that is massive, right? For any PvP, any PvE content. But if you also don't want to revive a character, if that's what it actually does, then uh, you can also increase the defense by 140%, which is massive. So when she does become an LR, the passive does work here. And it does say when you arrive an ally with a special move, you're going to recover by 50%. Plus, the actual recover with the ultimate. So, they're going to heal up quite a lot if that's what it actually does. Okay, so her first skill is a heal skill, but it deals damage too, right? You're going to basically heal the actual lowest HP ally and then give them a buff. So, as you can see, we got a little special uh, special increase. So, our ultimate's going to do more damage, I believe. And we're also going to do more damage on our actual combined attack, basically. But I believe this only procs with the lowest HP target. But once again, just dealing damage and also healing your ally. Pretty good, right? All right, so a second skill is going to be a single target heal. You're going to give a character 25% damage reduction. So as you see right now, you're also going to extend buffs to and also heal an ally too. So once again, more or less just focus on healing. That's kind of what the character is for. But you can also turn characters basically into tanks because you're getting so much damage reduction. And if a character is getting targeted like quick and you don't want to die, then healing them up and also making them more tanky is going to be very, very beneficial. All right, so that are the three characters and the breakdown. Like I said, to quickly run through if you didn't just skip through everything, Asta is going to be a PvE boss killer. Yami is going to be good for PvP and PvE, but definitely better for PvP content. And Mosa is going to be a good healer for both PvE and PvE content. So like I said, the general picks right now is definitely going to be Yami, Mosa, and then Asta. But like I said already, since there is another Yami out right now, who is uh, very, very good for clearing and for, like farming and just doing a good damage healer. I don't know. I think personally, like I said, my go-to pick is definitely Mosa because I'm going to probably summon and get this Yami and I can't really use both Yamis together. But this one right here is definitely better for the pvp content so so i think it does depend on what you want from the character do you want to go down with the pvp be a mega pvp sweat then this yummy is gonna be better but like i've been saying it doesn't matter too much because you can just pick your favorite character get that free yummy if you don't want to summon for this one save for like dora free save for fauna save for licks save for all the hype characters coming in the next few weeks as well or if not, just summon and try your luck and try and get them. And in whatever skill page you do get on like myself, I got most of the summer go for her. So, boys, uh, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, it did help out. Then do hit the like button and subscribe if you guys are new for Black Club content. And, uh, yeah, see you in the next video coming out probably in a few hours now. And, uh, yeah, peace.